Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Yunank. I'm a principal engineer, a data scientist, and an application security architect. Today, I'll be covering the stepping up bot security, and uh, this is the, the prelude to our bot security program and an introduction to it. The, the overriding question that we are asking here is, are you paying enough attention to bot security? Studies after studies that, that we have conducted uh, led us to understand that the, for the uh, C-level executives, chief information officers and chief technology officers in particular, security is a top concern when they are making a decision about a technology adoption or technology purchase. And this itself leads us to the, to the, real, um, to the, real, um, the real issue that we are resolving here that insecure bots, when they are deployed in an enterprise, they limit the potential of an RPA platform substantially. How do they do that? An insecure bot increases the deployment risk by making an internally developed or an external developed bot very difficult to deploy due to multiple infosec reviews that it has to go through. This itself impacts the RPA platform's expansion potential as now what one team develops, even though it could be an internal team within a bank or a telecom firm, for example, cannot be readily used by another team in other parts, uh, in, in the same organization, but other parts of the organization. And last but not the least, what we are looking at is the, the business continuity effects of insecure bots. That the COVID-19, what it taught us is the business continuity and the RPA's impact, the positive impact, it has on an organization's ability to automate critical parts of business continuity, thereby maintaining resiliency is impacted if an insecure bot happens to be in the organization and the perception and reality of security and its importance can be clearly understood by uh, recognizing that the insecure bots increase the deployment risk. They create barriers to adoption of any bot that may be developed internally or a third party, as well as they create boundaries to what they, keep, what they could be used in terms of how critical functionality an RPA bot can be utilized. What the solution is, is the bot security program that we have created and we are going to introduce the program to you right now. Automation uh, anywhere security is made of two pillars. One is the RPA security, which is in charge of the platform level security. That is in charge of how our RPA platform is securely put together and the credentials work and other functionalities that enhance security and allow secure operations to exist. And bot security, which is the, the, what we are introducing today, is essentially the, the, the second pillar, that is the application level security. It is designed to essentially de-risk your bot development by giving you a, a standardized system that allows you to A, secure the bot, and B, obtain the perception of security by having the standards behind you in the form of four levels of security that we will be covering. This, this program is designed to make sure that the speed, uh, the time to value is quickly delivered, uh, thereby allowing you to bring your innovations to the marketplace quicker and support you by creating a comprehensive uh, and advanced cybersecurity standard that is evolving and as a living reality. One of the foundations of this uh, new, uh, the, the new security program the bot security program at the application level is the secure bot developer training. We created a, a, a free security training at the Automation Anywhere University that is designed on the triple issues that you'll be facing when you are creating a bot for your enterprise or for your clients. That is namely the designing, developing, and deploying bots securely. We created this program with the express purpose of of the, uh, giving you the required expertise on security best practices and how to integrate these best practices into your software development lifecycle process. Our goal is to teach you the top threats and mitigation strategies, thereby you are aware of these threats, remove them from a design and development perspective and what cannot be removed, uh, allow the prevention strategies to mitigate thereby reaching a security posture 
that will allow you to serve any enterprise client in any industry, no matter what the security requirements are. The security program itself is made out of four levels. The level one is the malware scanning, and level one is applicable to all bots in the bot store right now. What we are after with level one is essentially to prevent any bot from creating an antiviral infection or a malware infection in a client's desktop server or, or in the storage mechanisms. And that level one is the foundation of the, of the, uh, the, the security, bot security program. And it is right now the every single bot in the bot store is level one. Level two takes advantage of the developer training program that we set up in the Automation Anywhere University, and it builds on top of it by, uh, by a specialized checklist that we have created that covers the security best practices that when adopted are designed to, to combat against OWASP top 10 and CVE top 25 threats. These are the cybersecurity industries uh, the, the core list of main top threats that our bots will be um, will be judged against by any infosec team or any security review. And level two is ultimately designed to prevent design level problems with the bot that can become very costly to fix later on. Level three and level four are are conducted by our cybersecurity vendor, while level one is conducted by Automation Anywhere. Level two is essentially a self-attestation that when a developer is submitting a bot to the bot store, they are, they are stating that they have actually passed the, um, the developer training as well as self-attesting to the fact that they have gone through the checklist and their bot adopts this checklist. Level three and level four in comparison is, done, is conducted by our cybersecurity vendor and cybersecurity vendor partner as uh, security innovation. And now I'm going to cover the level three and level four in a bit of detail. Uh, level three, what we are doing is threat modeling and the uh, uh, data flow diagram, as well as the static analysis. What do they mean in, 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 um, in, in, in simple terms is, uh, this is essentially the cybersecurity partner looking at the bot design is assessing the threat posture that the bot represents. This threat posture is understanding how secure or insecure the bot is in terms of its functionality and creates an easy to understand table called the threat model and easy to understand diagram that is the data flow diagram. On top of it, cybersecurity vendor also does what is called as a static security scan, which means the cybersecurity vendor scans the dependencies as well as the submitted binary for any security issues, and the level three report is specifically designed to, uh, to cover all the issues and InfoSec review, a security review may end up requiring, and it allows the security teams to successfully analyze the bot in the limited amount of time that they have, and is designed to give them the confidence that the key issues that they're looking for is already covered. At the level four, cybersecurity vendor security innovation will be conducting penetration scan. Penetration scan is essentially the gold standard of cybersecurity world. And this is in essence, the, um, uh, our cybersecurity partner will go through uh, as some uh, mandatory test cases that we developed, some optional test cases that, that they developed, and some additional cases that may come from the threat model to essentially hack into the bot or take the bot and make it do things that, that, that it should really not do. And this itself is, uh, is, is using all the white hat hacking techniques. Um, they analyze the bot and they develop a report of their findings. These findings themselves, if they're in a critical or high issues, they will work with the development team to ensure those are eliminated. In other words, level three and the level four is designed to remove any high or critical issues that may be found either at the static bot analysis design and static analysis level at level three or at the penetration testing at level four. Now, what I would like to do is take a few seconds and show you what, how a bot looks like in, in terms of a level four secured bot and what does the report looks like to close the gap between the theory and practice.
When we go to a bot that is already uh, secured at level four, let's say Salesforce mass transfer records, for example, at bot store, we can see the results of the level three and level four by uh, clicking on this level four uh, banner. And what we see is the level three and level four uh, links over here. The level three link will look like this. And let's go through this. This is in essence, the level three. And as we mentioned, this goes through a data flow diagram which is in essence, this is, uh, this is covering the, the, uh, the core design aspect of the bot and it is showing how the functionality is actually being used by different actors and different dependencies. You can see different sections of the functionality is delineated here and this way it's creating two things. One, it's visually depicting what the bot does and this is very important from cybersecurity perspective to begin with. But over and beyond that, what it does is it also covers the security boundaries, such as the local user client control room boundary, which informs a security professional where are the key transitions that the data is moving through, which is why the, this is called a data flow diagram. And data flow description is also there to inform a cybersecurity professional as to what are the key data elements that are being extracted and used. Data flow diagram leads into the threat modeling, which is essentially is a mechanism that, that, that is using, uh, using the, the stride methodology to analyze what are the, the threats that are identified, what are the assets it, it's impacting and as a short description as to what they are. After that, these threats are further analyzed and delineated into the threat, the, the threat model. And the threat model is then taken into a mechanism called threat ranking. This threat ranking is very critical because this threat ranking allows cybersecurity professionals to understand which threat is critical and important to, to pay attention to, which one is not. But also it shows where in the scope of threats each one of these categories are living at. Level three, anything that's averaging seven will not be in that. As you are seeing, 6.8 is the cutoff. Anything that is seven on this dread, which are high and critical, will not pass level three. And the level three ends with the last part that is essentially the, the scanning. And this is the scanning of the code and the scanning of the embedded DLLs. And this itself also is designed to demonstrate that the code is scanned at a static level. This covers level three. As we mentioned, level three has a cutoff point. Any high or critical item will not pass level three. And after level three, a bot will be eligible for level four. This bot also has level four and there's a penetration testing report. Let's cover this. The, the penetration testing report starts with a test scope, which essentially describes what some of the assumptions that are coming in. Very critical, again, from cybersecurity perspective. And what we come into is the mandatory test cases. And these mandatory test cases is part of our standard. And the standard itself is covering these mandatory test cases are based on the checklist that the developers are self-attesting to at level two. So in essence, level two attestation, when it is correctly done with the knowledge, is the primary prerequisite for somebody passing level four. So level four is the mandatory test cases. And as you can see, based on threat model, uh, security innovation ended up introducing a few others. And there are also some best practices that we have agreed with them as a list that they, that they will end up utilizing. They've gone through this and they've identified one problem, which is not an uncommon problem. It's unsigned binaries. A lot of even uh, Microsoft's own software is, is from time to time is found to have unsigned binaries. It's, it's a security issue that the, in Windows, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of cybersecurity professionals, including myself, would prefer to use software that is built on signed binaries, which allows us to, to find out the origin and the, the pedigree of the binary that is actually running. And this covers the level three and level four. Uh, let's go back to our presentation. And now let's cover some of the, the details of the, the secure bot developer learning path. Uh, when you go to Automation Anywhere University, when you click on the learning paths, you'll find the secure bot developer right there. 
And this learning path is designed to take about two and a half hours of, of active engagement, and it has three parts. The first part is a secure bot design, which essentially takes you from the foundations of the, uh, the secure bot design core principles, taking from the cybersecurity core principles, OWASP, top 10, CV, top 25, why certain issues are very important, data address, data in transit, why encryption is important, and how to achieve that. What are the top threats that you will face from a design perspective? And what are the mechanisms to mitigate them from the design altogether, rather than having to deal with them later on in the, in the development lifecycle? SecureBot development itself is the second piece and the, the, the second course within the, um, within the learning path. And it, it, it is designed to impart the knowledge of secure bot development best practices. How to utilize standard libraries, how to pick dependencies, how to use dependencies correctly, how to ensure DLLs are packaged correctly, what are the tools that you can use to ensure that development best practices, secure bot development best practices are implemented at this level. Secure bot deployment, the last, the last course, is essentially designed to ensure that the bot that we are developing is secure deployed and securely operated. How to package for security? What are the certain aspects that needs to be done? How to, uh, how to use the bot skeleton that we have created correctly and robustly? And how to create paid bots with some of the additional security features that are designed to protect you and your intellectual property? And the learning path itself is, is designed to, to lead to the guild. What actually is the guild? Uh, the guild itself is created specifically to address the, the continuing needs of cybersecurity by our partners, clients, and, and vendor relations. Guild is a living entity that is designed to create a networking opportunity between our cybersecurity experts, global cybersecurity experts, and our partners and clients' development teams. The Guild is an inv invitation-only system that the learning path itself is guaranteeing an invitation. Anybody that is successfully finishing the learning path is invited to join the Guild. And Guild itself is a repository of knowledge. Knowledge bases, blog articles, offline and online events are being created to be able to manage the evolving cybersecurity needs at the application level for our clients vendors, as well as the uh, partners is the primary goal. The learning path itself is published several weeks ago, and it is the world's only RPA-related security course. At this point, we have over 100 graduates and over 400 current students are taking the course at this point in time. And as we mentioned, the learning path graduates are invited to join the guild, and the guild is designed to ensure that the knowledge that is attained in the course is not lost and is being built upon by up-to-date knowledge about the changing landscape of cybersecurity in the RPA industry, especially when it leads to the application level RPA security. And when we look at this, why a guild makes sense? A guild is filling a very important space that has not been filled in the security world of the software development lifecycle practice. How do we eliminate the silos between the security professionals and the development professionals so it wouldn't become an inimical progress? How is it possible to, to share the experience of developers and security experts from different organizations in a safe environment? And, and of course, how can we advance RPA industries, security best practices, and perform the leadership function expected out of automation anywhere? Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'll be looking forward to receiving your questions and answering them.